now I'm walking over to see Joseph at Mullalo Media to talk to him about his firm, about what he does for his clients. Should be fun. Looking forward to it. We all know how important site speed is, not just when it comes to improving your user experience and conversion rates on your website, but a little search engine named Google uses PageSpeed as a ranking factor. That is where Ezoic comes in with their standalone site speed accelerator. This tool is guaranteed to improve your site speed, not just for your visitors, but also will give you an 80 plus score on your Google page speed insights. Ezoic guarantees it. Ezoic also offers a whole suite of publisher tools, not just for site speed, but also for ad technology, compliance features, analytics, and so much more. So check them out at www.ezoic.com. Uh, Joseph, thanks for having me here. I appreciate it. Thank Amazing you for office space you got here. You guys can't see it because the lighting is bad if I face it that way. So you're not going to be able to see it. But I'll probably, if you allow, I'll do a time lapse of the That's area right. afterwards so you can get an idea. You have three levels here. Can you tell people about yourself and the company you're working at? Sure. Uh, my name is Joseph Sperzel. I'm the VP Director of SEO um, here at Media Hub. Media Hub is part of the Mullen Low Group, which is a kind of a what we call a hyper bundled um, group of, of agencies and disciplines. Um, we do everything from traditional linear TV all the way through radio, video, um, web development, and anything you can think of from a digital perspective, servicing uh, some of the largest clients and, and companies you could, you could think of. So if somebody wants something built and it's digital, you guys could do it? That's yep, at full, full service digital agency. And then you can make a win through the marketing you guys do. That's really the, the core of, of what we um, pride ourselves on is that we, we can not only build it, be innovative, um, be a strategic partner, but also um, then take all of the different pieces of um, CRM and, and media buying and programmatic and, and SEO and search um, and then you know really propel that forward and, and, and uh, get an unfair share of attention for our uh, for unfair our, share like that. I'm just question, I'm just curious. So if you guys take on a development project, will you always market it or you'll take on or do you have to do the marketing or no well that's I mean that's that's why we, we, we call it hyper bundled. Um, if you've seen our logo it's a it's a um, kind of a crack in a big octopus with a whole bunch of different boxing gloves there each it is. Yes. If you want to see the Wi-Fi guest pass, <laughs> it's if you came today, right it, will, it will look like it will. There's the Wi-Fi going also. There you go. Yeah. All right. So each one of those boxing gloves is is um, is a, a piece of this agency, right? So um, uh, Media Hub is one of them. Uh, uh, Mullen Low Perfero. Um, we also have Mullen Low Open, which is a, our CRM group. CRM group. We also just have straight comms and advertising. So um, and PR. So we can kind of pull from each one of those, however we see fit or whatever is necessary um, for whatever the client needs. So I mean, yeah, of course we would we would always love to be the um, the agency of record and do you know everything soup to nuts for um, for every one of our clients. But there are uh, there are some clients that have you know um, in house dev teams, so we just partner with them and we you know we can do search and media and okay. programmatic buying. So it's really um, so it, you can it, do it either way. It doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't and matter. any boxing glove you want, you can. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right. So let's go a little bit about your history in SEO. So you started doing. When did you first discover SEO in general? When you were like twelve? Or? Uh, no. Well, I'm. I, I'm. I, I guess I'm. I'm older than I than I look. I guess I got into um, a little bit of uh, black hat, you know, or just dabbling in in what really was SEO back, you know, um, ten years ago, which I, I was actually in my late twenties. Uh, just kind of getting into it. I was always um, I was always into writing and, and blogging and things like that. But I, um, you know, I mean, I guess back then, uh, if you were doing SEO, you were doing a bit of black hat, no matter what. By black hat, I'm just, we had a conversation before. Black hat is hacking or it's link building. Um, or you know, cloaking, li or? link building, some cloaking, some you know, right. just um, that was the history. It's not you now. System. You don't do yeah, any of absolutely. that in this company. No, everybody, everything here is white hat, right? Absolutely, yeah. Despite no, the black we, wall, yes. everything is yeah. really bad. All right, cool. And in this company, you you started doing SEO for an agency before this company or only for yes, this? Yes, I, I started out my agency career at a place called Morpheus Media, um, which actually does not exist anymore. Um, it is still a Facebook group that uh, all of us are still members of and, mm -hmm. and uh, still interact. But um, that's really where I kind of cut my teeth in, in white hat SEO um, and really um, learned a lot of the, the technical side. I, I feel like I came in with a kind of a 
blogging background or a, a writing. Um, I was an English major in college, so I, I just I always kind of um, enjoyed that that part of I guess the the web um, publishing yeah, side of things. Content generation, right? Um, but you know, I, I really uh, you know I really got into you know technical SEO and and the interactions between platforms and what we do uh, in this in the search space. And so, what are you, what are the things on technical SEO that get you most excited? Uh, I mean, currently, I mean, I'm uh, I wouldn't say that I'm a, a Python developer, but I think utilizing uh, Python uh, to to pull in data, to do data visualizations, to kind of streamline the processes that that my team like deals with on a, a day in day out basis is really like the the core of what I'm what I'm really into right now. You know, following people like. Um, Hamlet Batista and Jamie Alberico and, and yes. people like that. You know, just really understanding you know the um, the ins and outs of, of the actual like code base and, and being able to pull and push data. Jamie's actually talking at XMX East. I don't know if you're going to be there. It's around the corner from here. I hope you have your tickets. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. I'll be there. Okay, awesome. And uh, Paul Shapiro, I just met with, who's very big into technical SEO. Um, it's always this fight between like content generation and then the technical SEO. Is technical SEO? Remember, like a few years ago, it was like, is technical SEO dead? And like, is SEO dead? Is link building dead? Is it's content always, dead? It's, it's Everything is dead. dead yes. Everything is dying every day. So, uh, what are the biggest things you see from like? Is there a difference in terms of how? This company here builds, let's say, websites uh, in terms of the technical SEO challenges you have versus maybe, you know, you adopt a website from a third-party development company that you guys are gonna have to go ahead and fix for a technical SEO perspective. Is there any type of in my in my tenure in SEO? I mean, I've I've inherited sites that were, um, you know, like built in Angular JavaScript, and they pretty much came to us because they lost all visibility in all search engines. Right. Um, because they did, they didn't know any of the workarounds. I mean, search engine. I mean, Google is getting better at at, um, at crawling JavaScript and things like that now. But honestly, you know, this was you know maybe three four years ago. Um, you know, those types of, of um, technical issues are um, are the types of things that we kind of we jump into and the things that we see. It's always better if we if we're building it here, um, especially if it's a, a rebuild from the ground up. Because right. then we. Um, you know, my team can be involved from the beginning, giving recommendations for platforms, um, you know, visibility things. Frameworks, like that. right? And, yeah. and is there a uh, is there a percentage that you want to share in terms of the number of clients that come to you with their website that you say, you know what, we really got to build it up from the ground from the ground up, and we'll do it for you here? Is there like a fifty percent ratio? Is it like twenty percent? Or you really can't say. Current client base, I think it's probably um, maybe. Uh, 30 30 percent or so of course it's a rough that we'd, you know that we'd want to just blow up and build from the from the ground up um, and it, honestly that comes from the landscape um, that we live in right a lot of a lot of large enterprise companies are going with these large CMS platforms um, like Adobe or Sitecore or something like that and they all have the ability to be optimized um, for search I mean it, I, I, I remember you know, Six seven years ago, there were um, certain CMSs that I would just I wouldn't even want to touch right. a client's website um, based upon you know the the code base or the the fact that it was on a you know um, built a you know on in Portal or something like that right you know the dynamically generated URLs things like that like just it used just to like be a hard. crazy crazy things that you you couldn't fix unless you unless you move to something else or, you know you just yeah, I remember like the, the URL structure used to be uh, like a URL, whatever random URL would come up with, then every single time a page was viewed, there was a session ID behind it. Yep. It was just pretty much wild. And to the credit of us SEOs and the SEO industry and Google, of course, I think a lot of these CMS platforms yeah. have really, really gotten good at making at least the fundamentals around um, making a site or a CMS port, uh, platforms uh, search engine friendly. But I assume you see a lot of people when they input their content, they're going about it maybe necessarily the wrong way when it comes to user experience and how a search spider would crawl through it and understand the website. Do you have any comments about that? The the sites that that are not doing things correctly that that I that I audit are usually fixable. It's just that no one uh, no one looked at it from the perspective of can it be crawled? Can it can it be found? Nobody's doing things from the beginning. Um, a lot of times. 
large companies look at um, website rebuilds and then at the end will come to us and say like, okay, now 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 bring the SEO in and sprinkle it on, you know, and it just, right. that's not that's not the way things I, work. I can't stand getting phone calls. I just built, I launched my website. Could you pl- I don't do SEO, but they call me all the time. <laughs> I, I bet any of these people watching would love to get the leads that I get. I'm like, you're doing it wrong. Just start again, yeah. hire an SEO while you're building it. This way you don't have to like sprinkle yeah. stuff on this. Guys, sorry for distracting, go ahead. No, 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 I mean, that's, <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, the, the the rework that has to happen in order to do, um, you know, s- some of the things that, that we recommend just I mean it can it can really explode the the price of a of a, of a web- website rebuild. So it's um, it's really something you need to think about before you I'm just before cu- you get started. I'm just curious, what percentage of the clients that you take on have technical issues versus content issues, or is it always a mix? Is like are the technical issues usually worse than the content issues? I'm just curious. Um, usually like the technical issues are, are more difficult to overcome right. than the content issues. Okay. Um, the major content issue is usually just the, um, the inability to create content at scale mm-hmm. um, and to have a diversity across different nationalities and things like that instead of just um, uh, you know, taking the same content and just translating it a, a, a million times. Um, I think that that's usually the the most difficult thing is is having an international SEO client that can't scale their their content. Usually, those international um, SEO projects are a little bit more sound as far as the technical side of it because they've had to um, kind of traverse the issues of um, locale and um, geo detection and the, you know their servers and things like that. So. They've already taken a lot of those things into account. Um, a lot of times, uh, the fixes there are more on the um, utilizing like hreflang to specify, you know, what should be served in what locales and, and things like that. It's the it's the content piece that that's the that's the most difficult in those scenarios because, um, you know, so, someone in Canada and someone in the UK right. are not you know don't shouldn't be served this, the same content even though they both speak English. I think John Mueller from Google once said the hardest technical SEO thing he notices is people getting hreflang correct, especially for really <laughs> large difficult. sites uh, yeah. with lots of locales. Anyway, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Uh, where can people learn more about you, follow you, or whatever? Uh, I'm on Twitter, at Joseph Spurzel. Uh, it's pretty pretty simple. Um, you know, we're, uh, uh, we're online here at mediahubml.com. I uh, find out more about Media Hub, and uh, that's about it. And they got lots of boxing gloves. So. Do, you yeah. any, do you give out gloves for swag or anything like that? <laughs> no. Um, so, sometimes, sometimes. I don't know if we have any in the no, office right answer. now. I mean, I would, I would give you one if we got one. For anybody who wants, just follow him on Twitter, and then mention it, and then maybe, <laughs> maybe he'll send you a digital version. There you go. That'd there be you awesome. Go. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. So that was Joseph Sperzel from Mellon Lowy. It was a great talking about technical SEO, UX, how his company uh, does it all from like, pretty much all perspectives. I'm looking forward to uh, talking to him again in the future.